No one, no one knows, no one, no one knows We all woke up in the upside down Turning inside out like we've all been led astray We've been standing on the outside in Trying to find our friends like we're all just cast away Feel like we've been missing out Hello there and welcome to RickyLeaks.com Another installment of our fiction deep dive into series of seven, where we look at all type of written word, fictitious, metaphorical, myth, legend. And we look at all of these different little stories and see how they can help us kind of get a grasp on reality. And believe it or not, reality is much stranger than fiction. So everything we talk about today is available at rickyleaks.com. Everything from small rabbit holes to cures to much bigger rabbit holes where aliens and vampires and parasites and witches and real life zombies all have a place in not only fiction books, but also real medical journals. We cover body snatchers, I am affirmations, defense against the dark arts, we explain how your tax dollars actually funded things like we see in Stranger Things. We cover portals and dimensions and Lord of the Rings and even the principles of hermetics. Oh, me and my husband did that little plastic masonry. It's a Lego movie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's a Lego movie um, de uh, deep dive that my husband and I did. It's really cute. So we have all of these type of videos alongside my videos using elements given to us by God to cure every disease known to man. So my website is R-I-K-I-L-E-A-K-S. And today I'm joined with two friends to help me delve into Harry Potter. Welcome for the first time to our channel, Alexis Rose with Ascension Diaries. Thank you so much for bringing your knowledge of space weather and the tarot all things heavens with you and jenny constantine thank you for coming back on the channel i cannot wait to delve and see your take on the freaking boarding school of all magical boarding schools let's do this we've already done a lot of these videos there's i would say a bunch of prerequisites before having this talk conversation about harry potter the harry potter universe it was inevitable. We were eventually going to talk about this subject because there's no way to talk about a world where Christians are hiding from a magical force that is being taken over by reptilian humanoids and dark wizards and they're actually coming into every part of the government sector for really the past 600 years, but it's really gotten bad since 1990s because that's when the Dark Lord came back and he started slowly invading all the secret societies, which we could actually see evident here in America from race riots in 1992. And those very same young gentlemen were telling us that there's a war going on behind all of our backs and we don't know about it. So this is putting some things into perspective of a different dimension of sorts. And like I said, if you haven't already watched my journey to truth videos on vampires and witches and magic in real life I highly suggest you watch those first hello there and welcome back to all three of our channels say hello girls hello hello, hello. today we are joining forces for probably the most <laughs> in-depth magic talk to date um welcome with us Jenny Constantine, we have already done, I think, four or five videos together covering the principles of hermetics, and even we just did a little Halloween covering um, Wednesday Adams in the first talk of magical boarding schools. So thank you so much for joining me again, Jenny. Oh, and goodness. Alexis, I'm so happy that we met this year. Um, it's still a new friendship. And when you meet someone who gets you, who's like, all right, let's talk about getting rid of the evil demons. I'm on this. You have to just hold them tight and close and never let them go. So thank you, Alexis, for joining us today on this Harry Potter magical talk. Thank you for having me and for allowing me to host us and trusting me with this container today. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with StreamYard, it's a great tool as other are becoming a little bit weird. So we're here dealing with 
those forces in our technological efforts as well as we're talking about stuff that didn't involve computers at all. So it's weird. We have to like combine these worlds in the modern time and it's a fascinating conversation. So I'm glad that we're having it. Huge synchronicities the last couple of months about all this. So I'm ready. Like you guys have no idea what we're prepared for you. It's going to be wonderful. So stick around. This video is going to be great. Thank for, yes. Thank you for explaining that. Like we have to join forces. We have to bring in this modern magic that is in all of our home, which is just simple Wi-Fi, your yeah. simple computer. And we have the ability now, which is something we would have never thought of 20 years ago, to just quickly jump on a video screen call with three friends from around the country. Like unheard of. That's stuff that you saw in like Back to the Future, realistically. And I um want to remind people of this because we use magic every single day and all three of us have people on our social medias and comments going you guys are using magic while they're on a magical device known as a <laughs> cell phone and you they're using bluetooth runes as bluetooth to get their information so um we don't take this subject lightly we quite literally uh me and jenny did an exorcism video i'll go i'll cover where to watch all of our videos yes already so we definitely bring in the holy spirit we definitely bring in the big g god the creator of the universe we'll definitely go over protection but these things need to be talked about because we live in the society that harry potter explained was going to happen. Um, when we were younger, it was fantastical. It was like, that'll never happen. And I'm rereading the books, listening on Audible while we're doing this series. And it's not that magical anymore. And that sounds so weird to say, but it's like, they're just getting their news from moving pictures on tablets. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm, we do that. And like, there's certain things that, they're bringing up and I'm like I have an app that could do that like you need to go get this special thing and make this whole spell potion that takes months I'm like honestly we have the technology that could do that like right now so we've even surpassed Harry Potter spells and magic in our society so I think that's a really interesting point that you brought up there um but yeah so we're gonna start the presentation do you guys have anything you wanted to say before we kind of started this talk Let's get into it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Whew. So, like I said earlier, I bring in Jesus. <laughs> I bring in protection. I, I bring in. <laughs> so, we are going to start this off the Harry Potter talk with only going over the first two books and movies, um, year one and two. And hopefully, for the rest of the year, we can meet up and kind of have this talk. Um, from here on out. So when people hear that we're talking about magic and all of this stuff, understandably people get shaken. They're like, oh, do not idol worship anyone. The stuff we talk about, I don't want people to go and start worshiping like Nicholas Flamel or even <laughs> just the players on the board right now, like Trump. Like we are talking about what's going on. Right. We do not tell everyone to just go and blindly worship or start practicing like anything we're talking about unless you are well versed and um, bring in protections and stuff of that of your own okay so we're here to understand the tools the groups that have hijacked everything in our society from school and literally to arts and craft time we must learn about them without fear so suit up with god's power and love and let's learn about the shape-shifting enemy Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask for the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, shroud our feet in God's gospel, give us the sword of the spirit, the shield of faith, and any other tools to protect us from evil forces. And so it is. Amen. Your house, any black tourmaline, amethyst, clear quartz. How do you say that? Hematite? Mm-hmm. I said hematite. Hematite. I've never seen that one. Smoky quartz, black obsidian, bring them here because this is going to give you the protection of all the many forms of um, trickery that comes along with this occult subject. And then, of course, we have our herbs from the ground, sage, rosemary, cedar, lavender, bay leaves, juniper, frankincense, mugwort. They help 
significantly so much that they were given to the baby Jesus during this time of year um, by three <laughs> wise men. So it really does help to get um, your protected space in order. And I was talking on Facebook this week, clean your house. There are quite literally astral spiders. Oh, <laughs> yes. We'll go over that more in the third episode. Uh, but yes, there are very much astral spiders. When you are feeling down and depressed, don't be surprised if you have some um, energy stealing astral things around you. When you clean your house, I've heard even just cleaning 20 items moves and disrupts their space enough that it kind of gets rid of them. And that's when you feel like, oh, I can clean everything. And then when you have that clean house, you feel better. People start losing weight even. Mm -hmm. um, so that is really, I'm a huge detox person. We talk about purging. Cleaning your house is one of the biggest rituals for purging you can do. So definitely starting with that. So, all right, we find Mr. Harry Potter living under the stairs. He is about to turn 11 years old. And we learn that this young boy has lost his parents. We don't really understand the full story yet. Um, I don't, the child doesn't even know what happened. He's basically ignorant of his life, who he is, what happened and truth. So um, we meet this little boy as a, he's about to turn 11 and he starts receiving letters um, <laughs> through the mailbox. So we don't even have to talk about the staircase right now, girls, but what <laughs> do you notice with this beginning of Harry Potter before he knows everything? I would really be interested in your guys' point of view. <laughs> Alexis? I was going to say, I think just the way they opened it was the reason why I resisted Harry Potter as a child, because I was just so shocked that they would ever treat somebody like that. And like in literature, I'd never read or experienced even in, you know, other stories and stuff. It doesn't it didn't feel familiar and it felt so gratuitous in a way. And I was just shocked and I was like, these books are going to get darker. Like, <laughs> this is hard. And I remember distancing myself as a child from it all because it was just like something was giving me a weird vibe. But now as an adult, it's like, okay, I have to understand every little bit of what they're actually trying to show you, which you've obviously laid out and you've seen the pattern from other places. So it's wonderful yeah. to know now, but it's also frustrating because the state in which Harry Potter was left in is similar to the, it is a allegory for like humanity in a way, or at least the slave class of people in a way. So that's my concern is how ignorant they've been able to keep our population, these like magic schools and all this. So, and it's yeah. how real it is. No, that's totally true. And that's, it sounds so bad. I never really thought of it like that, but yeah, this kid's being like abused, like really bad. Yeah. Um, and we're just used to it. We're like, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> Hudley and uh, Vernon are assholes. But like, you don't really actually think about it. Like, yeah, the, it, he's not treated um, as a citizen. He's definitely an other. And I yeah. think we do notice this um, being outcast. Me and Jenny, our last video was talking about outcasts. And they're the last person you want to make mad. But it, <laughs> Muggles don't mind poking fun at the outcasts. <laughs> right. They don't know. They don't because it's their ignorance. It's their ignorance. They don't know. Um, you know, we don't know what we don't know. But I always thought so. Like we all we're about the same age, all of us within what, like maybe four or five years or so. And so we all grew up with Harry Potter. Harry Potter is like our culture, truly, in a lot of ways. Like every couple of years, they would come out with another installment. And like, yeah. so we grew and evolved alongside Harry and his friends and the whole world, the wizarding world and the muggle, muggle world too. Um, but the idea of being under the stairs, I mean, you, you've laid it out really well here for us, the Masonic uh, symbolism and the implications that, you know, being under the stairs or at the base, at the bottom of the stairs, sort of synonymous with the idea of ignorance right there, you say it, and the idea that we're kind of on, he's at the lowest rung of awareness and consciousness at the beginning of the of the series and you know the entire thing is is the allegory of him moving up the stairs sort of coming out into the light from dark to light and you know his consciousness now he can move up the rungs of consciousness and every year he gets scarier and scarier um in the eyes of his adopted you know the the aunt and the uncle they become intimidated by him almost as soon as those 
letters come in. Um, they're terrified. They know. And I have a lot of thoughts on, on the relationship between Petunia, Aunt Petunia and Harry. Because Petunia, wow. her blood, she, she shares the blood of Lily. Mm -hmm. And Lily's blood is like, that's to me the crux of the entire Harry Potter, Potter series was Lily's sacrifice. And so the only reason that Harry was safe in this house, in the home of the Dursleys, is because of Petunia's shared blood with Lily. As long as he was there, he could not be touched by the Dark Lord. And it was all about her sacrifice. It was all about her blood. But I realize that's a that's something else. But I just want no, it's not. That's beautiful. Hard. That's oh my gosh. But, but and Petunia herself, she doesn't want this kid. Imagine you hate <laughs> your sister, and now you have to watch the sister's kid that probably looks just like her and. Correct. After she's gotten herself in serious trouble. I know. Like, it must well, be hard for Petunia. And that's kind of a sacrifice for Petunia as well. She didn't give up the baby. She obviously, you know, watched over it. Well, I don't know if you guys know this. I mean, you probably do. But um, when Lily and Petunia were young, very, very young, and, and Lily got her, her Hogwarts acceptance letter, Petunia wrote her, a letter to Dumbledore and said, please, can I go too? So Petunia's hatred and disdain for the wizarding world and her sister was rooted in je really jealousy, but more so, even less than jealousy, I think it was more like, you know, she wanted, she wanted to be a magical person and she wasn't. And Dumbledore replied and was like, I'm so sorry, but you're a muggle. You can't come. You're not invited. <laughs> Oh, she can't go here. She doesn't even go here. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> no, my goodness. Okay, so I wasn't even going to bring this up. I just saw it like right before going live. Um, thanks, Alexis. I follow all these Harry Potter things on Instagram now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, one of them said, Dudley, when he grew up, his kids were invited to Hogwarts. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So like you said, Petunia's blood carries it. And we... I think it was me and Jenny. I don't know. In one of my magical videos, I do explain how it's the aunts and uncles who pass down this um, magical air. And like when you have a prophetic child, like Anna, wait, Luke Skywalker, he goes to live with his aunt and uncle to grow up. Harry oh. Potter goes to live with his aunt and uncle. Um, this goes for Sabrina, the teenage witch. She, her parents don't watch over her. Her aunts watch over her. So it's not even so much if the aunts or uncles like you or not. It's always, oh, practical magic. She goes to live with the aunts. You live with the aunts mm -hmm. and uncles. Um, magical children do. I don't know what it is about it, but there's a lot of prophecies that bad people are looking out for these children and they're constant. I mean, this is a tale of old as time, accident. Hey guys, this is the part that I wanted to correct myself on. See, I'm a Virgo, I even correct myself. I correct everyone, I'm annoying, I know. But like Hermione, we're the ones that you need to you know, have on your team because we save the world from reptilian overlords. Because we don't let anything go under the rug. So, <sighs> magi. Christians, they hear magi and they're like, oh my God, that's horrible, satanic. But, the, but you can't tell the story of Jesus, baby Jesus, without the magi. Here's, here's the reason why. King Herod tried to kill baby Jesus. And he would have succeeded if the magis listened to their orders. But they were intercepted by an angel. They were given knowledge that they did not previously know. And they realized, oh, we really can't kill this baby Jesus. So we're going to give them gifts, if anything. And they actually gave their magical abilities gifts. The magic They gave magic gifts to protect the baby. So instead of killing the baby, they, even if they didn't give the baby gifts, which they did, but they did. If, even if they didn't, they gave them the gift of life because they were supposed to kill and murder this amazing prophetic child of God. So that's why it's so important to truly believe that you are a creation and a child of God because you get like the best protection right away. But a lot of people don't want to do that and they spent a lot of time ironically being scared of the one idol that God told them is okay and it's their vessel because he gave them heaven within their body so that he will be able to be protected if they just believe that they can be protected. So I don't want to hear anyone talking ill about magi be in, if you truly believe in the story of Jesus, which they're all fiction, right? So 
that's why I cover it in this video where fiction dictates reality and the real fiction or the stories that were written turn into real life happenings and that is the truest form of magic is the written word. You're using a wand of quite literal elements that are in quills and in the beginning stages of pattern design and creation, which is simply pen to paper, pencil to paper, pencils, oh my goodness, that's really a wand. That is quite literally lead encased in wood. That's a wand if I've ever seen one, but if it was a wand, you wouldn't want rubber at the end of it like an eraser. You would want that separate so that there's no nothing ruining the conduction of energy. So little things out there. I can see real life magical tools all around us and um, people don't tend to think or realize and think and give gratitude and realize all the good that comes from the magic that we use every day. Now, there were prophecies that kids, certain people would be able to harness this magic differently than others or maybe be a flame, a starting match to a lot of people learning this information really quickly. So that is why bad guys will try to tell the future and find a prophetic child that will rise up against them and they try to kill that child. But in killing the child, the child gets away, which makes the whole thing happen. And this is a story all this time. The Magi were supposed to kill Jesus, but they ended up not. These are wonderful instances of three magic folk. <laughs> and then we have um, King, or the Pharaoh trying to kill Moses, and he didn't, which brought down his empire. Then you have, even nowadays, we hear about baby killing and uh, child sacrifice a lot, and we're going to hear about it even more. These are the old magic that if you're ignorant to all magic, you are allowing the old magic to take over. And um, this is a story old as time, and if you believe in certain fiction stories like the Bible or Harry Potter, then that probably means millions of other people do too. So regardless if they are written stories or not, they are going to happen. So we need to start paying attention to what was written down because our ignorance will allow it to happen. And I don't think anyone wants that to happen. Sure enough, you try to kill all these babies, but one always gets away. And it's almost like this Star Wars effect where P humans just don't know how to deal with prophecies. I don't even think wizards do because <laughs> they hear something and they make it end up happening instead of like trying to stop it from happening. Where if they would have left everything alone, it wouldn't have happened. It's so interesting. As a tarot reader, that couldn't be more true. And yeah. it's it's a bit of a paradox. It's like a paradox in, in our field. And, and, you know, you guys read, um, Alexis, I know you're a reader. Um, it, it's the, the power of suggestion is it's the, it's such a huge thing, like the responsibility of now knowing this information. We know the prophecy. Now, do we, are we going to subconsciously perpetuate it, make it happen? Or are we going to rally against it, do everything we can to change it? So it's a really interesting, interesting paradox. It really is. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I understand what we're about to, like, we have to cover Freemasonry and what Jenny just explained. I know many people who are scared of the tarot and they're like, you're talking to demons. And like, they go into demonology really <laughs> quickly because when you talk about Freemasonry, again, I have covered this. I will show you guys where to find all of our magic works up till this point. But mm -hmm. um, with Freemasonry, this is something that you deal with the very first thing you kind of learn as a Freemason is the Testament of Solomon. It's this story where King Solomon goes into a cave, finds seven demon lords, and they're scared of the surface. And he's like, why are you scared of the surface? And they're like, there's angels up there that can kill us. We have equivalent angels that can control us. And um, they explain to King Solomon that if you have the ring of power, which is a pentagram, ring you can control all the demons so if a good guy in theory has this ring of power great the demons are controlled we're not gonna have to worry about them but if bad people have this same exact magic that's where things get um dicey and the whole thing about freemasonry and royals is trying to follow this king solomon bloodline and Things get shady really quickly because it starts off with like uh, Queen Mary having her baby stolen from her 
um, quite literally by vampires and changing the entire Bible as we know it. Books were taken out, passages were taken out, words were changed. So um, yeah, there's no way to talk about magic and secret societies without talking about Freemasonry. But as you can see with this staircase, what a lot of muggles and um, normal people don't understand, you just hear stuff and you're like, oh my God, he's a Freemason. Well, you guys, okay, what kind of Freemason? Is he or Scottish Rite or York Rite? Because these are the two biggest lodges here in America and they're ran very differently. I can already see a couple problems with one over the other. This one has 33 steps. And when you have finished one step, you have a master or a um, you're an apprentice to someone and they are teaching you, they are checking your work. If you step out of line, they're saying, hey, you're not doing this properly. And then you slowly advance when you're good enough at your skill to, you know, this higher up, you're enlightened. But the York Rite only has 13 steps and no one's really checking their work. They quite literally have a democracy with raising rank. You don't have to know your skill. You don't have to be like checked on anything. And it's very much a pay to play way of obtaining um, knowledge because there's only 13 steps. And since it's a democracy type system, you can have, let's say, Hunter Biden be taken to the top of the ladder really quickly because his daddy got a bunch of friends to vote him in. He doesn't actually need the knowledge. So when people are talking about Freemasonry, it's like, okay, I can already see how there's two different sects here in America and they're very, very different. And I can see one kind of um, doing not so good as the other one. So when we talk about Freemasonry and Harry Potter, there's a lot of equivalents. We're going to go into Diagon Alley really quickly here. But um, we start off, Harry gets a letter. He gets invited to a secret society. Um, and <laughs> after watching and reading the books, I'm like, they should have just sent him a house. <laughs> like they had the ability to stop with all the like secrecy of the invitation by just sending a howler like, hey, you're invited to this school. Um, right. <laughs> It's so funny. So um, masonry quite literally means brick masons. Also, this goes for a lot of trades, steel, um, electricians. We have tradesmen in our towns and our towns, tradesmen, they, they, they could build a town as great as Rome. They can destroy a town as great as New York. So this is why it's very important that um, construction of all sorts is always targeted as the first people to kind of join. So you get a letter, you start joining. The low ranks literally starts off as the same letter that Harry Potter got. And then masonry is quite literally magical bricks. And um, I wanted you girls to talk. I didn't really write anything else. But I mean, owls and the symbolism of owls. I know when I think of owls, I think of like the fourth kind movie, which is quite literally like aliens. and they show themselves to whoever sees them as owls and it's like really scary because it's like I know they're a messenger but are they a messenger of good or bad does anyone want to speak on owls well I definitely had an owl there's an owl that lives around my house and it will land on the house and like give off a few coups once in a while and it's always just so eerie you're like okay what do you want <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I hear you. Like, all righty, it's the nighttime. Like, mm -hmm. let's, what's the message? It's just funny. They're a little territorial, it seems like. So I feel like lately I've been being followed around by the owl energy a bit, but it's just because they're, they like magical people, I think, as well. So it's almost like comforting. It feels like we're all just kind of hanging out. <laughs> well, Jenny. it's funny. Yeah, you know, in, in the Harry Potter world, owls are messengers. They relay messages, and Hedwig even sacrificed her life to, right. to save Harry because she loved him so much. It's like, the, to me, that death was far more painful than Dobby. That little <laughs> yeah. We get it. You hate Dobby. No, and I they it. went through it so fast, and it, it also gave up everybody and, like, potentially killed Fred or George, which oh, one of them, yeah. I forget, but 
that was like, the hard, that was a tough loss. That was a really tough loss. Rough. But you know, the idea the um the owls, you know, of course the freaking hell's angels are passing my house right now. Yeah. <laughs> like literally like there's like ten motorcycles <laughs> out here. Um you know in my awakening, like years ago, I recall the owl was probably the most significant next to the snake. The serpents also, you know, made themselves known to me and they were like, hey, everything's going to change, you know. Um, and so owls, I think because they're nocturnal and they are so perceptive, they're hunters, they have the ability to perceive a massive span of distance and space just by being there. I think the idea is synonymous with, um, you know, people who have a hyper dimensional, multi-dimensional sense of awareness. And so in my, you know, I, I'll never, ever forget and, and you guys know who um, Hecate is or Hecate, whatever you'd like to call her. Um, but she is my my like mother deity, if you will. And I don't again, I don't this isn't about worship of yes. idols. This is about working with energy. And she came to me as an owl. And when I tell you, it was just this the most penetrating. It was the eyes and the eyes were just penetrating my whole being, my whole soul. There was no secret in my soul that I could conceal from this owl being. Um, and it was ultimate love and it was it was safety and there was nothing scary about it, although it was extremely like it was, you know, imagine somebody just, um, you know, putting ultraviolet light through your whole body. Like you're like an x-ray, this thing x-rayed me. Um, so the been idea, there. yeah, you know, it's been like there, a, yeah. a common experience for people during their waking. My ear just started ringing so hard. <laughs> I just realized one of my screens was um, made blank and it was my screen covering Hikate. Um, no. Yeah, <laughs> it's blank. Okay. So I'm going to make it really quick. Um, sure. A lot of people, we catch a lot of flack in this field because, you know, we work with a lot of uh, Christians and, you know, people that they're Christians, but they don't completely understand the Bible or the Jesus story. And so they have this, this um, inherent guard. They're very guarded against these deities and these energies. And if you're afraid of it, then you shouldn't work with it. Point blank. That's just my general philosophy. If you're scared, then don't even go there because you'll you'll align yourself with like a negative experience of that situation. I never had fear of Hecate and she knew that. And so coming to me was like the, a natural. It just felt like a very natural course of action. Uh, oh, but she helps. works. She uses the owls, the snakes, the spiders, all of these nocturnal sort of creepy crawly things that people associate with like darkness and, and bad things. And I think yeah. that, you know, her whole thing is the downtrodden. It's she she helps those who the rest of the world shuns, you know, like mm -hmm. looks over, looks, you know, judges. That's her whole thing is she comes to those who are kind of the underdogs, the people that are not you know, loved that much. So, um, so okay. with that, what you were just explaining, um, I want to cover that really quickly. I'm really quickly making my Hecate, um, page again, because the only other time this has happened, I was on journey to truth and I had a whole screen about Hollywood magic. And if you <laughs> believe in a story is going to happen, it's going to happen regardless if it's fictional or not. And that's mm -hmm. how these fiction characters come to life, which is why I talk about, the Bible so much because it doesn't matter if it was edited by the Council of Nicaea, which like totally it was, but like because people think it's going to happen, yeah. it's going to happen. Like it's That's in good. the consciousness of everyone. They think it's going to happen. And like Jenny just said, if you're scared of it, if you think something bad is going to happen from this energy, don't play with it. And literally Yoda, oh. Yoda did not want to bring in Anakin because Anakin was too fearful and he's like we cannot teach this kid he's gonna make he's going to allow the Sith in because he's so fearful and sure enough yeah. he made his wife die even though Aww. she didn't have to just because he thought it was going to happen and like mm. Vader yeah. came from that <sighs> yeah so those obsessive looping doom thoughts are something you should really be careful of and seek help about right away and talk to anybody about it. One of us, even if you want, because that's, that's classic and 
preparing for this video, what was coming through for me was beings and entities that wander around, especially in the United States, that mm -hmm. try and lure you in with screams, with uh, those kinds of thoughts, even the taste of blood in your mouth. Like all this week has been research about that. And last night we had a visit in a way and we had to deal with that personally. And I was prepared, but not everybody in the house was prepared. And <laughs> It still <laughs> happened. And uh, Very, unfortunately, yeah. I woke up in a bliss with while well, chaos was going on. And that can happen too. It's like uh, tuning your frequencies. It's like uh, almost like the music of these beings can pull you in and then train you on like the Pied Piper. But you have to maintain in your own frequency. And if you don't like what you're hearing, tune your, tune your radio a little bit. Raise your frequency out of range. And yeah. you'll be in a different reality. And all these la are layered on each other. And Harry Potter reality in my opinion is a layer of that too they're trying to i would say bring breadth to and like uh authenticity to in order to continue manifesting it more mm -hmm. but also it was almost like trying to be reborn because it was being shoved down by like modern muggleness in a way but mm -hmm. it was causing problems and you know we people need to know how to deal with spirits with their own spirit and so on so <clears throat> the Especially, I didn't even know how to say Hikate's name, but she came through this week too. And I was well, like, oh, I know your name. I was like, I've seen you around, but I don't know you. <laughs> so I was like, oh, there's a few. And then I saw Diana was another one, which is one I usually see. Uh, so Artemis or whatever. And I was like, okay, so the, these, the witchcraft most is like talking about these feminine entities and what they do and it's something i don't even know so it's like studying harry potter's like catching up on all this like real stuff oh, as well mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there's the whole side of witchcraft which doesn't even really get covered it feels like in harry potter it's very paternal and very masculine wizardry or whatever more so than sometimes the witchcraft side of things you know mm -hmm. the language they use it's a lot and it's a lot to take on because i don't want to engage that world or frequency match these guys because they're struggling more i've noticed than the muggles do even sometimes and you're like okay mm -hmm. being a magical being is not an easy feat like it's an extra layer of you need to protect yourself against generations of confusion and magic and twisting and mispromises and curses yeah. and all this weird stuff and that's why also then like the evangelical side like all of these people who can ex uh, exercise you know and bring this beings to the light these tormented spirits and speak with you know <laughs> i would mm -hmm. say other magical people it yeah. seems to be a theme that needs to come up like yes you also can find these things in the wild and bring them peace which is something i don't know the harry potter series does in a way talk about that a little bit but the piece is brought back onto the main character and like his own internal darkness which was cast upon him and instead it wasn't his own but it was like his burden to hold and that was one thing i was always curious about like it's inherently his own darkness wasn't really covered it was like all blamed on someone else's darkness so it's like mm -hmm. where does harry's that's a huge yeah you're right because like um, he can speak, Harry is a horcrux, we'll go into this, a, a lot of what Alexis just explained, I think is going to be the major talk of the fifth, sixth, and seventh book, because that's when things get real, that's when the Dark Lord comes back, which his um, reign started in the 40s, very close to, like, uh, Hitler in the real world, um, um. if... Edge of Wonder, I think they go by Rise TV now, they did a series called Hitler's Artifacts. And it was about all these different art <sighs> artifacts that Hitler in real life was trying to get. And literally, they're the Deathly Hollows. Oh, yeah, um, I was just going to say that. The did Deathly you see it? It's No, I like didn't, it, but that's, it seems like a natural. It's uh, literally, it's a piece of jewelry it's a sword. It's the um, Spear of Destiny, which is a sword, like of Gryffindor. It's a necklace. It's a ch chalice, quite literally, like the Holy Grail. So we see in real life, and Jenny and I always talk about, like, the Knights of the Round Table is a very real example of our life. So this is all going to be talked about later. But since we brought it up, Hogwarts Legacy yes. is 
an amazing, I almost like it better <laughs> than Harry Potter, honestly. It was an 1800s version of the universe that they had to go through. And they did have a Professor Hecate. They oh, didn't yes. have Hecate or Hecatate. It's like no E at the end. It's just Hecate. So yeah. she's like one of this older, yeah, she's like one of the most brilliant professors at Hogwarts. And I love wow. that they did an ode to the Hecate character. Wow. Um, she has a very yeah. interesting story of herself. And um, I, there are moments that I see the Hikate story being told in. Oh, <gasps> there she is. Oh my God. She did the crossroads. <laughs> yeah, I really could have made the crossroads. Oh, cool. <laughs> you had to remake this slide from memory. Uh, yeah, I knew what it was. It was, I had made it yesterday. So I was like, let me quickly wow. explain it again. And it's funny that it was taken off. You all saw that. But um, so, okay. Yeah, really quickly, I haven't seen this version of her either with the three heads because I, I hadn't. Yeah. And you said Artemis earlier. So the idea is that it is Hikate, Artemis, and I think Celine, the moon oh. goddess, mm -hmm. make up the three names. Okay. Um, and they're seeing like literally all she's supposed to be is like a mall directory. That is literally all she is supposed to be. What has it turned into the crossroads has been Satan quite literally becoming the biggest billboard that you see before you get to this intersection. So when we talk about That's these dark things, they can't touch you. And people are so scared because they right. do see scary things entering their house. They or hear them. People getting exercise, like, you know, possessed and stuff. But literally the way that the devil works is he can only influence. We have free will, you guys. The devil can only influence your idea. So the way the devil has hijacked these crossroads from Hikate and the women, the divine feminine, is he will tell you his way before you actually make your own decision. The devil will be like, oh, if you go this way, you can be the best guitar player. You just have to sell me your soul. And the person doesn't even know what their other options are when they do get to these crossroads. So they're like, okay, I guess I'll just do that. And instead, if they would have just ignored Satan and like kept going, they might have realized, oh, you can like be with this mentor and he'll teach you over three years how to become the best guitar player and you get to keep your soul. Like there's other ways, <laughs> right. basically. But, um, Yes, this evilness has taken over the crossroads. It wasn't supposed to be that way. It was supposed to be a mall directory that you go up and you're like, okay, what are my choices? And Harry Potter shows this perfectly. Uh, we skipped a couple slides, but Draco Malfoy goes up to Harry Potter right, right away. And he's like, hey, I'm Draco. I want you to be my friend. Join yeah. Slytherin. And Harry's like, oh, hell no. Like, I've heard stuff. Like, no. So right. he makes the choice and he tells the dark family because Draco's dad told him when you see Harry Potter go make friends with him so right. Harry says no go away demon <laughs> like I'm not joining your forces <laughs> he could like quite literally makes his own way and that goes into even telling the sorting hat not Slytherin he very well could have been a Slytherin if he didn't make his own choice and tell the sorting hat like no we're not doing that um, really quickly, just let me go over this, uh, removing glass. Okay. We were talking earlier, Her Hogwarts is a school of witchcraft and wizardry. This has nothing to do with gender. We all think wizards are boys, witches are girls. No, witchcraft per the Hogwarts universe is a skill of a craft that you can learn. Um, you can learn the tarot. You can learn astrology. You can learn the heavens. You can learn potions. 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 You can learn chemistry. You can learn formulas, basically. That is, per Hogwarts canon, uh, what makes witchcraft. It's, it's a craft that you can learn. However, wizardry, and we'll cover this more with the um, Hogwarts legacy game, but basically... Wizardry is something that is inherent. So when Harry Potter just simply wants his cousin to fall through the glass, it happens. He doesn't have a wand. He doesn't know magic. He doesn't know anything. He is simply allowing wizardry to happen. And if he wants something and if he allows himself to get it, 
he can manipulate by will. So that is the difference between witchcraft and wizardry per JK Rowling universe. And I 100% agree um, that I do see this in real life. Is that um, Hagrid right there? That's is that Hagrid, Hagrid with the yeah. umbrella? His yeah. umbrella wand? I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, this is something that we're all going to have to deal with pretty soon. And if you look it up, I know Snopes is like, it's not true. But there are giants. <laughs> and we, when we think of giants, we think of the Nephilim. Um, and they're scary. <laughs> like, that is what everyone kind of thinks of when um, we talk about giants. But in real life... There's good giants. There's nice ones. Well, Herr Hagrid. Hagrid is half giant. Um, mm -hmm. And he is wonderful. But he, even in the Harry Potter universe, and we'll talk about this later when it does happen, I think in the sixth book, but he, Hagrid has to go out and find the real giants living in the mountains. And they're not nice. They're not even nice to him. Like, mm -hmm. it's a hard struggle. So even in this universe, um, the giants are something to be... They're grumpy. <laughs> They're grumpy, exactly. So yeah. in real life, we're like, we don't have to worry about giants. Okay, except this guy was found. Yes, we do. We do. <laughs> There's a bunch of interesting stories. There's a bunch of interesting bones. A lot of people think that they made dinosaur bones because they were finding so many um giant Science. humanoids that they're like oh it's a dinosaur don't worry and it's like no it was obviously a humanoid so like why are these bones like this femur 15 feet long it's crazy leave it to the smithsonian to get in there muddy everything up you know the okay. smithsonian is like literally the worst if anybody needs any references on modern day encounters with legitimate giants anybody can just research this incident that took place, I'm, I don't know what you would call it. We'll call it the Afghanistan giant. I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> and yes. this is where uh, some US, I believe that they were army, you know, army soldiers, some, some kind of combat unit, infantry unit. Some of them went missing. They send a team of other guys out to go find their boys mm -hmm. and they come up on the mouth of the cave. All they, there it is right there. They see remnants of their, their gear everywhere. Out comes a red headed giant with 11 fingers and 11 toes. Mm -hmm. The guys are in a, um, a flight or flight response. They freeze. They realize what is happening. They empty their magazines into this, into this giant because it takes a lot to kill a giant, apparently. And they they do ultimately kill it, but not before this giant, red-haired giant impales one of their soldiers with a spear. Um, now, all of this, like, these guys waited years. They all had to sign NDAs. They couldn't talk about it. But they actually were able to prove that this happened because they went through the paper trail, the amount of fuel that was necessary to airlift this giant out of that space because get, of course the army took it black ops took it they were like we need this and we need yeah it. god knows what his like blood does or whatever they did to the poor exactly. body they needed and so this really did happen i believe the men that talk about this i don't think they were lying why would they lie so this they are out there in remote regions of this world they live out there and they're not nice. They'll eat you. <laughs> they'll, and they're they'll... also always in the mountains, which is um, people don't realize Afghanistan is a beautiful country. Like if it wasn't what it was, it would make like the best ski lodge resort destination yeah. in the world. Like their mountains are, they put like Colorado kind of to shame. That's how drastic they are. So when we're talking about like, oh, how can these things live without people knowing like Afghanistan and this whole cradle of civilization, um, <laughs> that, they can easily hide. There's a lot of things that people don't realize. So yes, thank you for bringing up that giant. And of course, if you look it up, they're just like, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. It's just a creepy pasta story. No, mm -mm. it's real. <laughs> okay, let me pull this. Yeah, up. that okay. feeling inside when you see a yeah. cave and you go, "Ooh, that's a that's in there for a reason." There's something oh, good man. there. That's not <laughs> our domain, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's somebody else's domain. <laughs> oh, so scary! My skin crawls. <laughs> um, okay, so can't run from fate or truth because that's something they don't really show in the movies, like. The uncle tries to take Harry everywhere. Like, you're not going to ever know about this. And, like, you can't hide from it, really. Um, 
it comes to a really scary scene and I have the darkest before dawn because it's like they go out in the middle of nowhere and like this huge scary giant knocks through the door but Harry finds out the best thing in his life and it happens when he's 11 years old and I did do a um whole video recently I think on the imagination podcast with Emma and we explain how going through life in public schools or even these you know crazy different schools they have the government come in and they have the government test everyone's eyesight and hearing when they're like 10 or 11 third and fourth grade and they're just like oh we need to see if you can hear well or see well and what they're actually doing is they have things that other people can't see like if you don't have sight or hearing you're not going to hear certain of these like tones but if you do have sight if you do have hearing you're going to press oh yeah i heard a tone so the government is finding which kids have sight and hearing these kind of like wizardry powers through sending government people to the schools and literally testing their sight and hearing and we just think oh it's for the poor kids um we need to see who can you know like that's what you're told and it's like no they're trying to see who's wizards and not and then by the fourth grade they will call your parents and they're going to take you out of your class and they're going to move you into a special class and a lot of people remember this happening in fourth grade um we covered this in depth over there so this is like very on par with how in real life they kind of um recruit these children it does have to happen between 10 and 11 you're going you're starting puberty i think that's a huge time of developing your skills so um we do see this at hogwarts um okay let's go over here so um, fourth grade yeah it's your fourth grade because so everyone's that's the new yeah okay. That's basically, and that's roughly the age that these kids were in. Um, I think you turned 10 or 11 in like the summer of fifth grade, before fifth grade. So it's very interesting how they did mention that. Um, quite literally, we talked about masons are bricks, brick makers, brick layers. And in order to enter their secret society, they have to play special bricks and you open the secret society. Now, the interesting thing about this, and I did not grab what I'm talking about here. But if anyone watches the first two Harry Potters. Right. Yes. Uncle Vernon on the mantle. He's talking about being normal and how shitty wizards are and everything. But he has a compass and square, which is the um, Masonic symbol, the like protractor thing with the G inside of it. He has that on his mantle. And then in the second book, when Dobby Dobby like ruins um his boss's dinner date, that's Mr. Mason. If you yeah. hear his name. Boss. So like that's the crazy thing. This old grumpy white man, he's like, oh, you know, magic stupid, but he's trying he little does he know he's trying to enter the society too through the Masonic order and he doesn't realize how big and how far it goes. Yes. Jealous. I, I just feel like Petunia was jealous. She felt left out. She was like, you know, you're a freak, Lily. Like, no, you're just jealous and you wish you were also a magical. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad because honestly, like, if you look at um, the Weasley family, they're a pure blood family. They're one of the old, like, the Weasley family. They have they're magic. Yeah. They, you know, they go way back. And yet you notice that Arthur Weasley, the father's name is Arthur, right? Yeah. That Arthur, the father, you know, Mr. Weasley, he, he loves the muggles. He is all about understanding the muggles. Yeah. And it's, it's you know, it's like you don't, there are these bridges. You, and you know that there's squibs too. So there's people that are ma magical families will have a child. That child is a non magical child and they're called yeah. squibs. So they're still technically allowed to live and work in the wizarding world, but they are non-magical people. So like a dud, they call them yeah. squibs. I, I always thought that was so funny. Like, oh man, you really got the crap. That, sucks. that really sucks. Um, <laughs> who's the janitor for the whole series with Mrs. Norris, the cat? Mr. Filch. Okay. So he's probably the most famous squib that we all know of. Um, and it's sad. So he has his little kitty. And I think she's actually more magical and can read minds and see stuff than he is. So uh, I'll just take care of him. 
Mrs. Yeah. Norris. Mrs. Yeah. Norris, the kitty. I think she can see, like, when the kids are, like, in the invisibility cloak, Miss Norris always finds them. So I don't even know if it's said in the book, but, like, I think Miss Norris sees a lot. She's something yeah. else. Yeah. All righty. So we go to King's Cross Station. This is really interesting. Um, I wanted to talk about the, symboliz the symbolism of the train. And whenever we talk about this um, magical influence in our society, every single time I talk about this, I always, always bring up the Amish communities. Oh. Um, and the reason I bring up the Amish, if you listen to what they say, like they think they're like the old school, like when you look at some of the harsher Amish communities, there's some Amish communities that do bring in small forms of electricity and they've, they've, done a little bit more modernization but like the old school sex of Amish their whole thing is the second the steam powered engine came out they're like nope this is magic this is this isn't magic yet this is just entering the realm of magic and they knew that the steam powered engine was like nope we're stopping our technological and that advancement here so if you go to a lot of these Dutch um not just Dutch, but Amish towns all over America, they stopped innovation, right? Basically in the late 1800s mm -hmm. um, when train and steam powered started coming out. So it's interesting that Harry Potter, you have to get to the magical learning institution by train because literally the Amish say steam engines are the very first step into the muggle world or into wow. the wizarding world so i think that's really interesting also if you have not watched it already there is a lifetime type of movie explaining jk rowling's life oh. mm -hmm. um i think it's called into the magic i don't know look up jk rowling biography and it's like this video explaining her life and up until making harry potter and she was on a train and she fell asleep on the train and she woke up knowing exactly how the first and seventh book would end and she mm -hmm. just started writing everything that she had in her dream on paper so i think that's really interesting as well wow yeah she said she was on the train and harry a fully formed harry potter appeared to her and like like as you know in a vision apparition whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it and I, I actually just saw this the other day and she was like itching for a pen or a pencil or anything, yeah. but in, she didn't have anything to write with. So she was forced to keep the image of Harry just as he was in her mind until she got off the train. Oh, and I, that's, it is really interesting because, you know, the train is synonymous with the idea of like, you know, it's this, ve it's this vehicle of consciousness and you are just blasting through at full speed, you know, trying to take it all in but i loved you know the platform nine and three quarters is probably one of my favorite like little tidbits in, in the in the harry potter world just because it's like it's right in between it would be right in between because the muggles you know they're not paying attention they're not reading between the lines and yet it's it's people that are prone to magical thinking or prone to multi-faceted multi-dimensional thinking they're reading in between the lines they see what others don't see and I was just always so fascinated with that. I'm like, I want to go. Where's my, where's my uh, Hogwarts invitation? <laughs> oh, and I saw, oh my gosh. So that's a whole nother thing right there. The Hogwarts invitations. Um, we got right. our, we got our letters just in different forms. Wouldn't you say? Yes, we did. Um, and we had to be here to explain it to the muggles and we had to learn how <laughs> they're being taught incorrectly. But like, that's another thing. I didn't even put this here, but and I've talked about it before. 9-11. Um, oh. 9-11 was... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Let's talk I, about it. I didn't no. want to go there, but no. 9-11. Oh, you've got mail. Quite literally, you've got mail. <laughs> you've got mail. Oh, Lord Jesus. No. We have to think about, uh, I love Bo Burnham, and he explains, like, everything in the internet was fine. It was just dandy. There was only, like, boardrooms and catalogs, and the internet was cute and dandy until 9-11 happened, basically. And yeah. it was also 
you know, 1999, 2001, when the internet was becoming what it is. And mm -hmm. everyone for the first time in the world was able to have access to information. And um, before this, you couldn't get occult books easily. Um, a lot of people don't like, I, I, I don't love having books. <laughs> We're going to talk about um, the Tom Riddle's diary in the second book here pretty soon. But like, there are scary books. There are cursed books. There are books that you don't want to lay hands on and you don't know which ones they are necessarily. And it's not so much the topics, but especially but, when being signed in to be president, that was a good book. We loved that one. That was a good one? scary one. When we watched Homie get signed in as president and they brought out that gigantic, scary yeah. Bible thing. And we were like, what? Is that was creepy, right? So yeah, there's bad books and they're like bound in human leather, basically. Like yeah. there's yeah. bad books out there. And that's where a lot of the occult learning up until 1999 was went through. And you got a lot of Lovecraft and you got a lot of this darker magic, Aleister Crowley. And that's like all you could get your hands on. But then the internet came out. So now, and Elon Musk has, I don't, you know, again, no idols. I don't like him, but he has told everyone like, you guys have, ev you guys have all the information at your fingertips and like, you guys aren't using it. And what he means by that is we literally have all the, <laughs> we have all the knowledge with yeah. internet. So I will beg to differ that everyone became witches and wizards after 9-11-2001 because they gave this information, this Hogwarts information was given to the public and there was a thousands of people massacre in return for this information. So mm -hmm. a lot of what we talk about, um, I did a New Year's Eve special with like a bunch of people once and I was like, you know, Nicholas Flamel is like real, like not only Nicholas Flamel being real, but like he worked with governments and it's out there if you can look far enough but if you look up nicholas Mail nowadays it just pulls up harry potter so not only did we get all this information at our fingertips they told us it was fiction and they're like no that's just harry potter what are you talking about no he was a real person and his name is on old ledgers of actual like british and u.s intelligence so it's not just like he was someone and then you this whole this whole book harry potter and the philosopher's stone is about Nicholas Flamel's stone uh, that allows metals to be turned into gold, any kind of metal. So it can just be like tin or aluminum and you can turn it into gold. And then also if you have possession of this stone, you can live forever. And that is the sorcerer's stone, the philosopher's stone. Um, and that's what this entire movie is about. So um, there's no way to talk about magic also without going into Scotland. Um, we covered this in my last video. Let me show you guys because I'm talking about all the videos we've done up till now. So really quick, rickyleaks.com is where all my stuff is. If you just scroll down on the very first page, baby rabbit holes is cures. And the reason I talk about cures, um, minerals, herbs, oxidizers, and carbon, this mm -hmm. will heal any disease known to man. It might take like a year. I know a lot of people want quick and easy stuff. No, it's yeah. going to be like six months to a year. You are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. You have 20, 40, 50, 60 years of toxins in you. It's not just going to go away overnight. So be kind to yourself and you can check these out. Also, I talk about cures first because you won't understand any of this stuff if you don't have a clear gut. If you have nasty stuff in your gut, look up parasites cause psychosis. Look up parasites cause fear. You won't be able to even learn about this stuff if you haven't cleansed. And that goes into baptism. When we're talking about magic, when we're talking about Merlin even. Merlin was half human, half incubi. He was a quite literally a demon child until he was baptized. And I think baptismal baptism has a lot to do with which kid gets the, um, gets the magic gene. And if you ask me, no, I do not want you to run to your nearest church and get baptized. Heck no. But I do want you to drink a drink of water that clears your whole body. So if you throw some hydrogen peroxide in some water, this will clear you like a baptism. So that's where we go into 
you have to cure yourself before you start learning stuff. And then I have all my videos. I don't give a F about aliens. Let's talk about parasites. <laughs> my oldest video, Defense Against the Dark Arts. We cover um, how to defend yourself against all this dark magic. I was on Journey to Truth a few times where we cover vampires and parasites, magic in real life, witches. Um, I did I Am Affirmations and the Second Amendment, which is probably our strongest yes. power that we don't utilize. Everyone thinks the Second Amendment is guns. No, it's the right to form a militia. Dumbledore's army would not have been legally allowed to be closed down and if, if, if it was in America, okay? So I am affirmations are going to be probably the most magic anyone can do starting with nothing, basically. What's um, funny is the, the uh, Umbridge, Dolores Umbridge, a Death Eater, who to me has always invoked this Hillary Clinton-esque oh, vibe. Okay. And of course, she was the one that started implementing all of these Orwellian rules at Hogwarts and that she was just like the uh, the in for the Death Eaters. Like she was just she just breached Hogwarts with this like pretty sort of non-threatening persona. And yet um, it was she was the one that took it upon herself to shut down Dumbledore's army. Of course, it would be the Clinton cartel, the Clinton syndicate. She is the best written villain I have ever seen. I, <laughs> she is the most realistic villain. Um, and this is something that Harry Potter covers very, very well. People who are super nice are the assholes that you want to know. Because in the second one, which this one's covering the second one too, um, what's his name? <coughs> uh, the Professor Lockhart? Yeah. Lockhart. Okay. So he's very nice. He's wonderful. He's charming even. And he's a load of shit. He's the person that literally these people saw on Travel Channel. Like the equivalent of Travel Channel and History Channel to these people. That was Lockhart. And he was getting all of these stories that were not his. And he was making them seem like he did all this crazy stuff. And he didn't know anything. And it shows when you're actually put to test. Like, okay... That's cool that you lied to Travel Channel. Now, you know, fix this kid's arm. It's a basic spell and he messes up. But yeah. he's really nice. And same with Umbridge. She's literally the best villain in the entire fiction universe, if you ask Umbridge's me. Umbridge's mother and brother were muggles. <gasps> and the, yeah, she was born to a muggle mother and the father was a magical wizard. Okay. And so she went to live with her father and she never saw her muggle mother or muggle brother ever again. So again, it comes from this, like this hate, almost like a, a really deeply internalized, like, I, I guess you call it racism or just, I don't know exactly what you would call it. Cause it's more than race, it's DNA, you know, it's, yeah, it's just yeah. a genetic thing, but um, I, her hate again, it's like a village and origin story comes down to the mother and the father she just like hates muggles so she like was disgusted by her mother and her brother because they were non-magical oh wow that's sad and there i will say i feel a little bad for her and we'll get to this later just because she's wearing the one of the horcruxes when she starts yeah. getting really 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 bad she's wearing like one of the horcruxes that made when the kids wore it Ron flipped out. Like yeah. he lost it. Like he you don't keep your calm with some of these dark magic. Like that's why I'm like cursed items. Like stay away from them. Because mm -hmm. if she was like even leaning a little bit grumpy, like she might have not been like a horrible person. But if you have a tiny bit of ego that is misplaced or a tiny bit of trauma that hasn't been worked through and then you're made to wear one of these cursed items you're you're fucked you're fucked yeah it's going to take over <laughs> your entire everything you're, you're now evil. Evil. yeah exactly so yes um magic in real life which is hermetics uh stranger things in real life plastic masonry was me and my husband kind of talking about how the um yeah, masonry, like how it's in our everyday society. And then you have to know the story of Prometheus to understand all this. It's how we got our fire. It's an old Greek story of this um, black goo parasite coming to earth and they gave us fire in return for our enslavement. So yeah, send it back. 